forgot to turn on that sign that would have been a mistake welcome back thanks for coming if you're new here welcome today is february 23rd 2024 it's the hotline show now if you don't know hold on one second hold on sorry hello Oh, God. Yeah, I know. Listen, I'm editing the video, and I know you don't like to look at yourself in the mirror before you record, but you really are going to need to start doing that. You've got a piece of blue tape on your sweatshirt. You've got to take that off. Oh, sh shit. Yeah. Th thanks. Yeah, no problem. I'm probably going to end up calling back. Okay, bye. So, talk to you later. <sighs> okay. Well, it's always good to have someone looking out for you. Now, the hotline show. If you don't know, people call the number below. It's in the description. Call that number, leave a message. You can ask about anything or tell me what's on your mind. What are you thinking about? Do you need some advice? I'm the worst person to give advice to you. Or, no, yeah, well, to give me advice, but also I'm the worst person to advise. So if you need some help, ask a question. We're going to do it. We're going to go the first call. Here we go. Hey, Noah, it's Dad. Um, I've been watching all your videos, and he must be a very busy man. Because it seems like I do all the calling of you and, uh, you know, pick up your f the phone to, to speak to your dad. You know, I like to hear from you a little more often. And, you know, we could talk about all kinds of things. We could talk about the election coming up, politics. We could talk about photography. I love talking about your stuff. Really good. I mean, you're such a creative person. I love it. Probably probably one of the most creative people I've known in my whole life. And uh, I know I'm your dad, so I would say something like that. But I think it's uh, pretty objective because I tend to be objective. I am a psychologist, by the way. And by the way, I am also a writer and an author. And my book, Bagels Anonymous, is out You know, now. You can get it on Amazon as a Kindle or as a soft cover book. And... Um, you know, um, I figure uh, I'd let the people know who are listening to this call that Bagels Anonymous is available and uh, that uh, maybe you could uh, support your dad in that regard because I support you in your particular endeavors. So, um, you know, if you'd like me to come on the show, talk with me about what the book is about, I'd love to do it. I don't think there's enough time to do that now. Just to say... The Bagels Anonymous is a very funny book. So um, lots of luck. I'm so proud of you and what you're doing. And uh, I hope this makes it onto your show. Okay. Take care. I love you. Bye. Thanks, Dad. Thanks for calling. Appreciate that. And for the watchers, listeners, yes, get a copy of my dad's book, Bagels Anonymous. It's a very funny book. It is. It's very funny. And if you think this is funny, you might think that is funny. It runs in the family. I'll put a link in the description below. Dad, look out for one or two sales. Uh, and yeah, maybe we'll get together on the show and talk about politics or something. I think everyone wants this to pivot into that. Uh, and it'll be good. It'll be good for the, the ratings, the viewers. Call back, Dad. We'll talk again soon. Maybe I'll call you. I don't know. I've been pretty busy. Next caller. Hey, Noah. Big fan of the channel. What first saw every day back in like 05, 06, something like that. Anyway, uh, thinking about uh, content, 
you could possibly take a page from the WWE, get some fake heat started with another YouTuber or a photographer. Or um, other option would be uh, doing a shoot, like about someone famous, like burning someone that you met. I don't know if they uh, – anyway, uh, keep up the good work. Bye-bye. Cool. Thanks for that call. Uh, yeah, start some beef, some YouTube beef. I'm into it. I'd like. I'd love to start some beef with Mr. Beast. Just cannot stand that guy. I mean, I get it. You don't have to tell me why people like it. I've watched enough. But, uh, yeah. But I, we're not too worried about him. Uh, famous person, start some beef with someone famous. I know maybe. Maybe I could make some calls and I could pretend to beef with a famous person. Maybe. That could be a good idea. We'll see about that. Thanks for watching. Thanks for show thanks for calling my show content. Next caller. Hey Noah, it's James. I was watching your recent video and it got me thinking. So at the end of this, this year, I'll be hitting my 10-year anniversary on my daily photograph project inspired by you. However, I haven't taken a photo every single day for 10 years. Um, when I started, I tried. And I remember after about two, three years, I realized I was getting so anxious that I was missing hanging out with friends just to make sure that I would get home to take to have a photo taken back in the days with a DSLR. Um, it's easier these days with phone, with phone and pretty decent camera. But it got me thinking, when you started and the phone really wasn't as good as it is now, how was that for, for your mental health? Did you panic? Did you have anxious days where when you couldn't take a photo? I noticed in your video series on your YouTube channel. Yesterday, you didn't make a video. I was wondering, was it a easy decision to just throw out the video or were you stressing? Um, would love your insight. Yeah. James, thanks for calling. Congrats on 10 years of your everyday project. That's a long time. So yeah, this is, it's a good question about getting anxious about taking the photo. I don't really anymore just because it's such a habit. I don't even really think about it. That said, I don't know how many years into the project it was. I started using a camera that was dedicated entirely to the project. So I used it for nothing but taking my daily photo. Actually, this is my current one right here, the Sony not Sony, it's a Nikon, cool pics, S10. Um, so this just sits on a shelf just to be used for my everyday photos. And if I'm traveling, this comes with me and it just comes out to do that picture. I think if I were to start it all over again, I'd probably just use a phone. It's probably good enough. Depends on how, what kind of quality you're looking for. Obviously it's complicated. Um, early on in the beginning, there was no expectation. No one even knew I was doing it. And I, the first camera I used, I brought around with me everywhere because I was in school. I was taking fo photos. It's just what I did. So I always had that camera with me. Another, another thing to note about just doing this daily thing, if I know I'm going away, like if I, if I'm going away for the night, but I know I'll be back tomorrow, I'll just take that photo in the morning and leave the camera behind. So I don't have to worry about the camera, it possibly getting lost or stolen. So there's that. And worst comes to worse, if for some reason, this has only happened a handful of times, I forget the camera or something happens or I don't make it home in time, I, I will use my phone or any camera that I have to take the picture for that day. So you make up your own rules as you go, but I wouldn't let it get too overwhelming for you it should be fun or just something that you do and if you don't feel like doing it you shouldn't do it um yeah i mean that's that's the the bulk of it being 
I was anxious about missing a video for this channel, but for no good reason. There's no, really, I'm not trying to make a video here every day. I just happen to be doing it mostly every day now. That will stop. I don't know when, but I'm sort of enjoying challenging myself to try and do it as frequently as possible, but it is stressful. So, you know, there, and that comes with anxiety. Anyway, that's it. Thanks, James. Call back. Nice to hear from you. Next caller. Hey, Noah. It's Brian from back in the Flickr days. Uh, thanks again for taking my call last week. I uh, just want to say hi to Peter from Germany again. I'm just curious, Peter, if you have any favorite conceptual, um, you know, contemporary German photographers, who would be your favorite right now? Uh, Noah, the question for you is on, um, you know, you take the same photo over and over again, and, you know, it's, um, you know, you got different scenes, trees, the river, or those sort of things. Uh, and I really like that format too. I do it. I'm just, uh, interested in your view on the ritual and, you know, after you kind of build doing it for a long time, if those moments of anticipation take on kind of, I don't know, I almost want to say like a religious experience where like the, the moment that you, you get to the scene, it's, it becomes really intense and you, you, you just understand it. More. And I'm also curious how you, you know, tweak, try to get the composition absolutely perfect. And if you kind of notice even the subtle differences in the photos, so I'm just kind of curious your angle on that. Brian, great question. Thanks for calling fellow diachronic photographer. Just first things first, my favorite contemporary German photographer, Andreas Gursky, no brainer, fan forever. Curious if Peter has a favorite, maybe we'll find out. Regarding the daily, or not daily, but regular diachronic photograph being a religious experience? Not really, no. I don't, I'm not that emotional, I don't think. Um, sometimes if the conditions are right and the weather is perfect, it feels, it feels amazing. So maybe that's a religious experience. Um, regarding the composition, I think this is a really interesting question because none of my diachronic photographs like Lumberland, which is right back there, um, in the wall, even the daily everyday photos, they're not perfect. Meaning the composition is always different. So, something like Lumberland, where I visit a tree regularly. Uh, I basically have a spot, but it's not the exact same spot. So you can actually notice there's branches in the upper right hand corner, those shift throughout time, depending on where I'm standing. I've mostly dialed it into exactly where I like it. But part of what I like about those types of projects is there's a sort of um, organic feeling to making them. And I feel like if it was locked off on a tripod or mounted somewhere and it was always the same, like a time lapse, it would sort of, it would lose that, that natural feeling, that handmade feeling. Doing it the other way feels too robotic to me. I just don't like, I, I feel like you can tell when someone does that, when you're just looking at a time lapse where it's the camera never moves, but when there's just subtle changes, I think personally, I think it, it makes for better pictures for when, especially when it comes to projects like this. Thanks, Brian. See you on discord. Maybe next caller. Hello, Nova. It's Peter from Germany again. Uh, my favorite president is Bundeskanzlerin Angela Merkel. Um, she's brilliant, so much smarter than the other presidents. Okay, something I've been thinking about a lot is the downfall of journalism and pop music as powerful forces that speak to the power. It all seems to be dumb now, lowest common denominator. Makes me sad. How about you, Noah? Bye. Peter, thanks for calling. Returning champion. 
I don't know anything about politics or even world affairs outside of the United States. So I can't really comment on Angela Merkel, although I have heard good things. I almost feel like that's maybe the equivalent of me saying my favorite president is Barack Obama, like it's the obvious one. But also, it, I find it weird when people have favorite presidents from, you know, his long, long ago. It's not obviously not ancient history. Um, just because, I don't know, I guess you people study these things and certain things that they do resonate with them. In my lifetime, obviously, it's Obama. Merkel, she seems great. I mean, compared to other German presidents that you've had, it's most likely an improvement. Regarding the downfall of media, yeah, I agree. It's bleak. I think I've said it here before. I think most things now, especially on the internet, are unserious. It's hard to get into anything, especially when when it comes to politics or the news in general. It just, it's, it just is horrible. Um, pop stuff, entertainment, culture. I think it's still, I think good stuff is still out there. Might be harder to find, but hasn't that always kind of been the case? I think so, so much of the stuff I liked when I was younger it was really sort of underground. No one knew about it. My favorite artist, like, very obscure. So I think it's out there. It's probably algorithmic. All this, uh, the popular stuff just rises to the top. But we just got to dig a little harder. Thanks for calling. Good question. We'll think about that. Everyone will. Next caller. Hey, Noah, this is Max. I just watched your fourth. Uh, hotline show, uh, you brought up cabin porn, and I am uh, live in Fort Wayne, and I've been a giant fanboy boy of cabin porn for many years. Um, I knew Zach's mom, and um, I just uh, love the fact that cabin porn is, you know, the importance has sort of changed. Uh, originally, it was like the escape from my office at work, just needing a mental break from the stress. And then with COVID and everything else and, you know, the elements of forest bathing, could you tell a little bit about how you got involved with it and maybe the importance for of cabin porn for you? Uh, I would love to hear more about that entire cultural movement. Uh, and thank you again for your, your YouTube stories and everything. You've been a, a big supporter of that as well. So, all right, thanks. Have a good weekend. Bye. Max, thank you. Thank you for that question. Yeah, Cabin Porn, if people don't know, I worked on this book project, which also started as a Tumblr called Cabin Porn. This is actually the UK soft cover edition. I photographed this cover and then the feature stories inside. Uh, started by friends, uh, most specifically Zach Klein, who bought the property that this, this cabin was on, which is only minutes from where I live now. About 10 minutes away. Um, it's a long story. I mean, I'm psyched to hear that it inspired you and you got into the culture of wanting to be out forest bathing. I've never done such a thing. Or maybe I have, and I just didn't call it that term. Uh, we're going to talk more about some of the stuff that I shot for that book. I have some video videos that I can share go over some pictures, some stories that I've never told before. So we'll we'll bring this up again, Max, in more detail, I hope. Things like that just require more time for me to prepare, and doing shows like this are easy. But there's good stuff, good, lots of content in that. Um, and that's it. That said, it wasn't entirely my project. In fact, like I'm, I'm like third credit on that book. So there are people who I think can speak on it better, but I have my own stories and uh, it'll be fun. We'll, we'll do more. I promise. We'll come back to that. Thanks, Max. I know it's Brad Hutchison calling. I'm calling to say I'm glad you brought up uh, Aphantasia this week because I had something on my mind. Um, 
You may not remember this, but in our first interaction online, I actually came to you seeking advice on how to overcome seeing an image in your head and not being able to capture it. And your reply to me was, it'll never be how you see it. It should be better. I think it's been like seven years, but, you know, I was just curious. If you could expand upon this and take me through your thought process, uh, that'd be awesome because what you told me all those years ago kind of still makes me think twice before I press the shutter button. Thank you, Noah. Bye. Brad, thanks for the call. Hey, Fantasia. Yeah, I mean, so where do we begin here? I do not remember saying that to you. I, I, I mean, it will never be as good as you see it. It should be better. Uh, it sounds like something I would say, and I'm probably saying that because in my mind, I don't see much. I just see gray. So anything that I have in my mind when I photograph it, it will just naturally be better. I was... I wasn't talking to a friend about this. It was it was some back and forth, I think on threads. And someone I know said he's a one on that scale of one to five. So he sees things very clearly. And he was saying that that actually is a detriment to his practice because he has something in his head that is so clear. And when he goes out and he tries to make something, it's never as good as what he imagined. And I thought that was pretty powerful. And I certainly don't relate to it because whatever's in my head, I know when I go out, it's going to be better because what's in my head really is nothing. So I could see if you, I don't know what you are on the scale, but if you are a one or a two, it might be difficult for you to make things that are better than what you're imagining. So, you know, this sort of as an aside, I was thinking about it because I, I'm not someone who likes to read novels. And I think after, after learning about aphantasia, I feel like I discovered that it might be because I have a hard time imagining what's being presented in the book. So it just isn't compelling to me. It's why I like movies and TV so much more and picture books. So with that said, I did hear from someone who said, that even though they are a five, four or five, they still love to read. So results may vary. Uh, that's it. I, you know, good good luck with the picture taking. Just got to take pictures, you know. And if you enjoy it, that's all that matters. Thanks for the call, Brad. Let's do one more. Hi, Noah. It's Caleb yet again. And I was wondering about your thoughts on the depressed artist stereotype. Specifically, do you think a person who is going through suffering or has experienced suffering in the past, do you think a person like that is more likely to produce great art than someone who has lived a relatively pain-free life? Um, anyway, that's all. Thank you and goodbye. Caleb, great question. Thanks for calling. Yeah, I think there's something to it. I do think more often than not, people who come from darker backgrounds, past trauma, things like that, and then work it out through their art, uh, their work resonates more bro more broadly. Maybe sometimes, often. I think I think I'm attracted to art that comes from dark places. I think, I think part of that for me, be, I don't consider myself all that dark, but I think a lot of the times I relate and respond to art that is dark and depressing because we, I feel I've been there or, you know, at least to a point. So I feel like there's, there's a relatability to that and it's nice to see that represented. Oftentimes we see with in music, people who come up, their the young, their their early work deals a lot with depression and trauma, and then you know, and then they put out amazing records, music that you get super into, and then 
at <laughs> they get famous from making art like that with those themes and then they have nothing left to talk about so the work just doesn't feel as deep anymore and it's harder to get into but that could be a number of number of reasons for that but yeah um there there's something there and not always. There's always exceptions to the rules. That said, I'm trying to think of what really happy art that I like, and I'm not sure. There's got to be some stuff out there. I think some of my with my work, the the moodier it is, the the more the more evocative it becomes, and the more I like it personally. But of course, on a commercial level, that can be problematic. It doesn't sell as well dark, moody stuff. There's always a fine line there. It's, it's really finding that, that line and working on over it. It's, it's where you find it, that pocket. That's it. For, hold on. Sorry. One, one second. Hello? Yeah, I know. Oh, God. Yeah, I know, I know. No, I don't think you know. I mean, that question with Peter was so good, and you just bumbled it. Of course, I don't even think you answered his question properly. And then Caleb always coming in with the great questions, and you just ramble on like a freak. It's embarrassing, dude. What the fuck? Everyone knows I don't prepare for this. Well, I do, but then when I'm recording, I get all flustered, the lights... Yeah, obviously you're flustered. Still no excuse. I mean, how many times do you have to do this? Do you need to practice more? Come on, dude. Okay. All right, well, thanks Thanks for the work that you're putting in. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. All right, thanks for coming. Have a great weekend. See you next week, probably. Call the number below. Leave a message, comment. See ya later. Maybe. It's 27 minutes. No, absolutely nobody is watching this anymore. There's no way. There's absolutely no way.